Hi guys, it's Paul from Modcon here. This is my next build and it's the Blom and Voss 138 from Supermodel in 70 second scale. This was a mid 1970s offering and in keeping with its vintage there are an awful lot of raised panel lines on the external surfaces. This was not uncommon at the time and it really was the norm to be honest until in grave detail really got going. Also at the time, I don't know if it's possible to do now, but this side section that I'm test fitting here was so complex in its shape that it couldn't be moulded as part of the fuselage, hence being added in as a separate piece. <coughs> so I'm just adding on here the side panels first of all, giving the glue time to dry, then they will be padded out and blended in with the rest of the fuselage, and then I can get started on removing the external detail. I wanted to make a 138A subtype, but I noticed belatedly that there were quite a few small differences around the central engine in particular, and by that time I'd virtually finished building the model, so I've kept it as a 138C subtype, and I've managed to find an aircraft that was operated by the unit that I wish to put the markings on for this kit, namely the Maritime Air Signals School number 6 and that was based at Divinal in Pomerania. There will also be some basic scratch building pieces on the internal um, engine cupola towards the back where the machine gun position and the gun turret position are so that you're not looking straight into an empty void. And on the cockpit floor there will be a bulkhead installed behind the crew um, seating area in the cockpit, an item which is not included in the supermodel kit. So I'm just taking time here to cut back some excess areas of plastic in order to try and achieve a better fit when the time comes. And this is the first basic dry run to test how good that fit is. As you'll notice, it's not too bad along the join line, except for that wee gap there. But if you look carefully, it's not matching up at the front or the back. So these areas will need to be um, brought into line in due course. I think that's possibly the polite description of what I'll be doing in due course, but you get the drift. And coming up next, the start of the application of the filler to the fuselage sides. And I'll let you watch that and a few other bits and pieces and come back to you again shortly.
that's the filling on the fuselage sides done for the time being. The single piece horizontal tail has been put together as have the wings and I'm just taking the tape off that was securing everything in place while the glue dried. I think there's also coming up in due course some images of the outrigger floats that go under the wings and maybe even the tail mums as well if you're lucky and that should be coming up shortly and yes here are the floats <coughs> two pieces to each float and here also are the tail boom sections um, I haven't actually put these bits together at this moment in time but they fit quite well I did have to open up the front intake under the propeller and that's a feature of all three engines which will need to be completed before um, the model is finished I'll give you a laugh now these are all the various pieces ready for further work but I ended up putting the two tail booms with the holes in the fin together and the two tail booms without the holes in the fin together so I had a bit of um, juggling to do to get the horizontal tail sorted but I managed in the long run and this is the integrally moulded exhaust outlets so I've just taken a little bit of time to hollow those out slightly to make them look a bit better and again for the central engine the exhaust pipe was under the inner wing and next up we have the insertion of a piece of plastic card behind the newly created intakes and that will be painted up at some point and again on the opposite side the same is true there's going to need to be a little bit of realignment of the intakes that I opened up but that shouldn't be too difficult and gluing these pieces together now <coughs> and you can better see the intake now I'm just waiting for that glue to dry slightly and make some small modifications around the intake and back to the fuselage halves you can see that the side sections have been padded out, sanded smooth and that's moving along quite nicely at this point in time in the background you can also see the ailerons and the rudders have been put together as well and all of the surface detail has been removed from the fuselage sides so it's nice and smooth and once it's had a wash and a tidy up we can get some additional work done there in due course and this is the both sorry this is both wings upper surfaces small indent out towards the wingtip and I managed to keep the three raised blisters as part of the detail on the upper wing the flaps and the fuel tank covers are the only areas that I've really 
properly engraved so I didn't need to do any work in those areas and again the same is true for the right side the panel with the small holes in it is actually where the bomb racks were fitted but this version I don't imagine would have carried bomb racks given its intended role so those were covered up and if you look at the fin here I've um, had to cover up the fin openings and on this side I've had to create new ones because I put the wrong halves um, together but it wasn't too difficult to sort out and the floats also have been tidied up and coming up last but not least the tailbooms again where the lower engine areas have been padded out you'll notice just where my index finger is the plastic did not form properly so I'm going to have to cut a small area and insert that and that's what you're going to see next
So, this is how I sorted the um, misformed lower curve on the outer engines. And these pieces were progressively thinned out and brought into better alignment. And now the cockpit. This door that I'm putting on here is actually being put on in the wrong position. It should be in the centre. But I did actually correct that later on. And just inside the upper half here, there's a fret of panel detail and one of these went in on both sides. I'm not sure you really see very much of it, but I know it's there. Something to feast your eyes on. <laughs> and here is the floor and the bulkheads in the rear sections that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And also I should add that the small circular transparencies were added into the fuselage before any of this were done, was done. <coughs> you can just see them there, underneath. And a little later, everything has been tidied up, blackwashed, etc. And it's looking a little bit more lived in. I added a cushion and seat belts onto the seats in the cockpit. And I think actually you might see some of that um, coming up in due course. And again, behind the intake on the central engine, there's a plastic card insert which will be painted up again um, to hide the, the space behind that newly created intake. And thereafter, the engine cowling join line was the first to be drawn together. And then afterwards, I progressively worked round the front and the back sections, let the glue dry and then padded it with filler and sanded smooth as necessary. And in an attempt to keep things together while the glue dried, I used some Tamiya tape, but it was the thinner variety and had to ultimately invest in a slightly wider width of tape um, in order that there was a proper hold between the two halves until the glue dried. The last thing you really want is for the whole assembly to spring open just as you're ready to put the finishing touches. How do I know this? Because I've done it so many times. <laughs> so um, don't be too alarmed by this rather thin stretch of tape I'm using here. But nonetheless, here is the central section of the build. The fuselage, the hull and the centre engine after being brought together and the join lines are padded out ready to work on. Some additional work was done in the wings along the trailing edges and leading edges to smooth things out. And this is the first sight of the tape, the dark lines on the upper and under surfaces which re replace sorry, the original raised lines on the moulding. These tapes are from the Polish company Lukgraf and I first encountered them building their 32nd scale resin World War I seaplane, the Friedrichshafen FF33. And these tapes can be bought separately if you wish and I'll put the uh, email address of the company into the information box under the video. And once they were attached 
I covered each tape with pledge just to try and give it a little bit more hold on the surface. There were one or two pieces of tape that I noticed didn't quite line up properly further on in the build and it's relatively easy to lift them. Sand away the slight ridge created by the pledge and relocate them without having to take the whole tape off. It was quite useful being able to do that. And as many of you will know, Pledge doesn't really give you too many issues with uh, running all over the place. It's quite, um, quite good at settling in pretty quickly and giving a good coat and it's easy to paint over it as well. And I should add that apparently Pledge is no longer um, being manufactured and probably hasn't been for a couple of years. I've still got some supplies of it, but um, I would be interested to know perhaps what some of you use in place of Pledge, um, especially if you're here in the UK, where I am, so it would be helpful to see if there's something equally good that you now use in place of Pledge. So after this was completed, the wings the tail booms, horizontal tail and outrigger floats were all attached without any major incident and tapes were added onto those areas as well where appropriate. Now this is the modification to the forward fuselage. This piece goes in in place of the forward turret. I'm not exactly sure what it was I suspect, given the fact that the aircraft operated with an air signals school, that it may have been some sort of radio equipment. The piece is um, a plastic piece, a small external fuel tank from the spares box, which was coated with a couple of layers of humbrol filler, then sanded smooth to the correct shape. <coughs> Excuse me. And then once in position, the space round about it was also filled in and then sanded smooth and blended. It actually wasn't overly difficult to do and it's a very unusual version. I've never encountered it uh, until recently when I saw a couple of images online they're very clear images as to how this looks so I decided I wanted to make that particular version I couldn't actually tell you what version it is because I've never encountered any description of it in any publication so maybe someone out there knows so this is the sides and the front and rear areas of the um, forward nose position being filled in as I mentioned and it's not overly difficult but you may need to um, spend a bit of time doing one or two tidy up jobs because when you're sanding the filler you always come across a crease or an indent that you can only sort by putting more filler on and repeating the process several times. Um, I tend to use three grades of sandpaper with this sort of thing, a relatively coarse and then a relatively um, medium grade and then lastly a very fine grade to smooth everything out. Uh, wet and dry paper that is. I find it's very helpful and after all that has been done this is where we are and we're ready almost to have the uh, undercoat applied and you can see on the outer engines that the lower curve has been blended in and smoothed out um, as per the remedial work with the plastic card. I was quite pleased that that came out so well. 
rip any paint on though, I'm going to add in some lengths of stretched transparent sprue and these will be fitted in and once dry paired down at the front until they are flush with the side of the nose and those were landing lights um, positioned in that area which are not again included in the kit. And now some of the paintwork, first the undercoat, then the colour scheme. I'll leave you to have a look at that and come back to you shortly. So guys, we're coming up to the end of the build in a few minutes, so time for me to say my farewells for the time being. I hope you'll have a great Christmas and New Year, and I'll be back in the New Year with more builds for you to enjoy. Look after yourselves. If you like what you've seen, of course, you know what buttons to hit, and I'll catch up with you all again soon. Take care of yourselves. I'll catch you then. Cheers. Bye.